Hey, Val. Hey, Stacy. I am so excited about this episode of Better Your B&B. Okay. We are going to talk about wallpaper. Wallpaper, yes. One of my favorite things to talk about. I brought some samples for the discussion. So what do you want to ask? What do you want to know about wallpaper? Like, let's ask from the perspective of a host. What do well, you, I, host I am Stacey, in- want to know about wallpaper? <laughs> I was going to say, I am indeed a host, so I can ask from that perspective. So I know wallpaper is such a hot trend right now for short-term rentals and Airbnbs. And I will tell you, I don't have any experience in how to pick out wallpaper. The only thing Mm -hmm. I know is I can go to Sherwin-Williams or Home Depot and find a pattern that I like, but I have no idea what I should actually be looking for in wallpaper. So I'm wondering, okay. can you give us the inside scoop? Right. Okay. Well, the first thing you want to do is think about, and I say this about everything, think about the style that you're after for the place. So in terms of wallpaper, you can get anything you want. You can get any type of pattern, any type of scale of pattern, any type of colorway, like there is just, there is such an abundance of choice all over the board from something very simple, minimal, modern to something highly colorful and crazy. We've got lots of eighties colors going back in style. There is, um, stuff that's really busy, you know, heavy, big, bold pattern versus small scale pattern versus something a bit more simple. So My advice is probably to start with inspiration from either Pinterest or Instagram and then narrow down what kind of style direction you're after. Because if you just start looking at wallpaper sites, probably you're going to be wasting your time scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and feeling really overwhelmed. So can I ask you a question about that really quick? So, uh, you know, you just showed us some examples of different styles and different patterns. What if I don't even know, like, let's say I'm doing a small bathroom. Should I do a big, bold pattern in a small room or should I be looking for something more subdued? How do I pick what pattern is right for the room? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think, again, it's about turning to the inspiration photos that are going to inspire you. And actually, one of my favorite places to get inspiration for wallpaper is looking at boutique hotels. So if you search for boutique hotels in a certain city, often boutique hotels are using wallpaper in really inventive and interesting ways. And they'll put sometimes a dark, bold, pretty big pattern in a small room, which kind of bucks the the norm or the rules about what you should and shouldn't do. But they make it work. They make it work because of their their overall vision and they make it all pull together. They often have quirky antiques, so they're going for a certain vibe. There is um, a hotel, a boutique hotel I just stayed in for my birthday in London called the Portobello Hotel. And they do beautiful, beautiful pattern play, interesting colors. Every room is different, which is kind of the, the thing about boutique hotels that makes them so enticing and interesting is that every room was individually designed. And there's um, just an abundance of inspiration if you're looking for doing things a little bit differently, making your place stand out. So I'm not sure if I answered your question, but I think it is just about like understanding the foundation of what you're after and seeing other examples of where it is pulled off well and knowing that, okay, yes, I can execute this. Now about the bathroom, I'm not sure for a rental for most places that I would recommend doing wallpaper in a bathroom in large part just because you don't know how that guest is going to treat the room in terms of steam, always making sure that the vent is on, always making sure that it's breathable. So um, I would say try and just do tile or paint in your bathroom and keep the wallpaper to other areas. However, mm-hmm. if you do a bathroom, make sure that it's a wet graded wallpaper. So something that is okay for heavy amounts of steam and water and very um, washable. Okay. I love that. So how would I know if something is a wet graded wallpaper? Is that, again, if I'm going to Home Depot or, you know, looking online, is that, yeah, you know, in the description should be listed. Yeah. So it will be. And then two, so it'll say cleanability, washable and 
that's very, that's very vague. But if you get a sample of it, which you should always, always, always do for a wallpaper, get a sample. If you can't get a sample, you make sure that your rolls, if you order them, are returnable because wallpaper is very expensive. And if you get it and it's the wrong color or the pattern is different, or you feel like the durability is not what they advertised because they didn't send a sample, you're going to be in a pickle trying okay. to sell wallpaper on Facebook marketplace for a fraction of the price <laughs> you paid for it. So always look at the specs. They will say the cleanability. Um, they'll say use usage. Sometimes it will say domestic and commercial, which is good. And just get a sample of it, mark it up, and then wash it um, yourself and see how, how it does when you're scrubbing it off hmm. with the magic eraser, which usually magic eraser won't do well. I will say, too, that even if your wallpaper isn't waterproof, you can sometimes put an extra coating of protection on top of it to make it scrubbable and waterproof. Huh. So I did that in my bathroom. Who knew? All of this stuff about wallpaper. So, okay. So ideally we are not wallpapering the bathroom. Um, ideally not. Not in a rental. I'm also curious, you know, you showed us some trendy patterns right now. One yeah. of the things that I am sensitive to is actually trendy patterns scare me a little bit because I want my um, property to be timeless. So I don't want it to look dated in five years. What are your thoughts on wallpaper and, you know, again, putting um, things that might be trending now in your, in your property, how yeah. that could play out down the, down the road. Talk to us about that when it comes to wallpaper. Well, I think with, with trends, I generally say to try and steer away from heavy, heavy trends. So for example, I don't know if you remember, like 10 years ago, the Chevron pattern was outrageously trendy and it was on every wallpaper and every rug and everywhere. And the people got really sick of it. So I would avoid things like that as much as possible and just go try and go for a little bit more timeless. Now that said, timeless isn't necessarily exist. It's kind of this thing we all want, but it's not really, there is no timeless, but maybe just try and avoid something that you see popping up everywhere. Scallops are huge right now. So like scalloped, I've seen them everywhere lately on Pinterest, on Instagram, everywhere. So maybe I wouldn't do a wallpaper with scallops or maybe just get a basket that has some scallops, something that could be easily replaced. Got it. Yeah. Got it. I have a blog that actually came out this week about wallpaper. So if you are in, interested in some of my favorite sources for wallpaper and some more details on how to select, how I select wallpaper, head to the Quill blog and we'll um, link that in the video down below. If I think about my, my own self, um, I only think about wallpaper, you know, being grabbed from my local store. And I know from talking with you that you know, there are all types of places that sell oh. wallpaper. You can do custom wallpaper. Um, you know, there are a whole variety of sources online. So I guess I would just encourage anybody that's watching to step outside your box and really, really dive into some of these amazing retailers, you know, online that also do wallpaper. And Val... Yeah. From your blog, we can find those retailers. Yeah, right? yeah, you can find some of my some of my favorites. And you know, I think too, you have to really like the pattern, and you also have to really think about the scale of the pattern and what it's going to look like on repeat. So make sure you're putting that in your vision boards. If you don't know what that is, swim around on my site a little bit more. You'll learn pretty quickly. You can't really design a place without putting it into some type of vision board to understand how everything's going to come together. Wallpaper yeah. being such a prominent part of a room's design, you really need to be able to put that behind the furniture and think about the other elements of the room and the architectural elements to understand how it's going to feel and look in the yeah. space once it's installed. Yep. Yeah. Wallpaper I love it. Super fun. I highly encourage everyone to think about putting wallpaper somewhere. It just makes your place stand out. It's so interesting. It's so marketable and, um, it'll make you different, which is the goal. Awesome. I'm already a little different. No, <laughs> you are. That's right. No, thank you so much, Val. I so appreciate it. All right. Thanks. I hope it was helpful. And, um, everybody tune in, subscribe below so that you don't miss a video from us whenever they come out every week. Absolutely. Be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, drop us a comment and let us know your favorite places to buy wallpaper. We would love to know that too. Sure. Okay.
Thanks, everybody. Bye for now. Bye.